Hey DIYers, welcome back! I took a little break this summer, but now I'm back and I want to show you my speakers. This is my first DIY project, what really got me into making my own stuff. Uh, but I did not stop recording videos, so I do have a lot of content and I just need to put them into video format and show you them. I got a comment from one of the viewers uh, to talk about my speakers, my red speakers. They're pretty much my favorite thing in my setup. So I built these probably seven or eight years ago and they were my first major DIY project. I spent a ridiculous amount of time actually building these speakers and I did a lot of mistakes. Uh, I could have done things so much faster and so much easier. However, I really do love the look of these speakers and they are my favorite thing to listen to. They do sound phenomenal and I really love them and I haven't been able to replace them yet. So in this video, I'll talk about the designer, the original designer of these speakers, Paul Cromody. I will go over my build and my experience building these speakers and what goes inside of them. I'll show you some pictures and I'll talk about the sound, my favorite part of them. At the end of the video, I will talk about how to resurrect this discontinued design. Yes, it is discontinued because of the driver here. This is a design by Paul Cremody and he's a pretty famous uh, DIY uh, builder and designer who has several very famous and very popular uh, DIY speakers such as the Overnight Sensations. Decided to do my first build, I wanted to do something simple, to the point, with an awesome sound and I stopped on Paul's website and he had exactly what I needed and wanted. This is the ZX Spectrum. It is a two-way speaker design, a tweeter and a woofer, and it's tuned to 37 Hertz. The, the crossover is pretty simple, passive crossover, very simple to build and implement. Paul did an excellent job with his crossover. Uh, the frequent response is phenomenal. I really wanted to get something with a great soundstage, something that's not too cheap, because I'm gonna spend a lot of time on building it, and something that's not like too complicated to build for the first time, so I thought this is gonna be a pretty simple first build. However, I found out the hard way that I went a little overboard and I made the things a lot harder for myself. It is made out of a ribbon tweeter here uh, because it, I really like this version of them and they have a lot of positive qualities and I really want to get a ribbon tweeter. Also, the mid-range driver, it's uh, six and a half inches. It packs quite a punch. And this box is tuned to 37 Hertz with a vent on the back. So when I started building these guys, I went overboard with pretty much everything. I had to get everything perfect, you know, down to the wire and internal bracing, the paint, the finish, uh, pretty much everything had to be like, like I'm buying uh, Wilson Audio Alexis or something like that. <laughs> I did a lot of mistakes. It took me way longer than I thought it should. However, it was an extremely exciting process and I woke up in the morning on Sundays at like 6.30 in the morning to start working on these speakers. It was that exciting. The box is uh, simple, but there's a lot of little tricks and tips and tricks that you gotta do to make it fit just right and all that stuff. So the first thing was building these out of MDF. Uh, MDF is uh, very heavy. It took a lot of muscle to move the MDF sheets. Uh, I cut them uh, with a circular saw. That's all I had. The cuts were inaccurate. Uh, and it took me forever to get the right cuts. I had to waste a bunch of MDF to get them to kind of square up as good as I can. Uh, I learned how to use a router. I bought a router. When you join two pieces of MDF, butt to side, uh, there's a line that usually shows up. I have a little bit of chamfer to hide some of the lines. Uh, inside, I put a bunch of internal bracing uh, that I had to cut out and I routed out with the rounded edges. How to make things not move around. Uh, when you're actually gluing them, that was the hard part. Uh, a lot of glue, a lot of cursing everywhere. But when you're making the cabinet, when you're putting the cabinet together, you actually see everything that's happening and it's happening pretty quickly, even if you're making mistakes. So you see all this flat pack of MDF that you've cut up becomes this beautiful piece of speaker. Another big part of this build was the internal dampening inside the cabinet. Uh, I put a lot of uh, dampening material, uh, placed, I lined all the walls uh, with this acoustic foam that I bought online and gluing everything together. So it's got really good internal dampening, I think, and it helps me quite a bit to control all the bass and all that stuff that's going on with it. And it's got a really good response for me. And lastly, probably the worst decision I made about these speakers is trying to finish them and make them perfect. Maybe you don't notice uh, from the video, one of them has a very high gloss 
face and the other one has a normal kind of regular kind of gloss face. I wanted to go overboard and do the piano gloss finish and all that stuff. It's just not worth it, I think. I don't think you'll ever get it perfect. It took me like two, three times at the time to actually finish them up. And I think it's a waste of time. In my other builds, I've used much simpler methods that got me very satisfying results with six or seven feet. You can't tell the difference between the regular finish and the high gloss polishing uh, finish here. I think I will go with something much, much simpler. I don't think it was worth it for me. So this build cost me about 500 to $550. The big bills were in the tweeters, which are about $100 per piece. They're BNG Radia Neo 3 PDRW ribbon tweeters. They're very well reviewed. Uh, they're $100 each. They're flat and they go way above and beyond 20 kilohertz and they go pretty low. Uh, they also cross over very well and they're using a lot of high-end builds. The mid-range woofer here, it's a six and a half inch woofer by hy V M6A which uses the cast aluminum frame. So let's talk about the sound. And that's my favorite part of the speakers, obviously. After I built them, I listened to them. They really did deliver exactly what I wanted from them. They are very detailed and clear. They have a very wide range. The way it's tuned with the port in the back, they go very low, surprisingly low for these six and a half inch drivers. I couldn't believe the bass that came out of these speakers at all in the beginning. They have a really good sound stage uh, in this space. I don't think it was is as good because I haven't treated it well yet. However, uh, in the old house that I had them set up, it was just way beyond these speakers. Feet, like six or seven feet away from them, I could hear the cymbals coming out for me. So it's very good sound stage, very detailed, very flat and very accurate. Where the speakers really shine is well-recorded classic rock like Dire Straits, uh, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd, uh, Fleetwood Mac. Oh my gosh, these albums come out live from these speakers like you wouldn't believe. Uh, my favorite recordings, super detailed, clear, you can hear the guitars, they're just punched so fast and so accurate. Also, they're extremely well made for jazz. Jazz piano comes out excellent on them. S the strings feel alive, the drums come out great too. So they're very well with when the instruments are very well recorded. Now, they are two-way speakers, so they have a limitation. Once you will listen to rock that has a lot of distortion in it, a lot of stuff going on, uh, it tends to overwhelm these drivers, I think. Uh, so that's where they kind of fail. So I wouldn't use them for like a lot of heavy metal, rocky stuff that has a lot of distortion in them. Also, I'm not a big fan of them for classical music too. I don't listen to too much classical music either, so I might, that opinion might be a little skewed. But anything that has uh, a four-man band with clear instruments, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I love these speakers. I have listened to Wilson Audio, Kef Blades, and all sorts of other high-end speakers on the New York Audio Show. Yeah, these aren't as great as those. Probably something from Totem or something like that will kind of get, get close. Nothing from Polk under $1,000 will kind of get to the level of detail of these speakers and the response of them and the clarity and the definition of the instruments. However, you do get like bulk speakers with three-way bulk speakers for $500 each. You will get a slightly bigger sound stage and more grand kind of movie theater kind of feel. These speakers also don't do too well with movies. You want that big sound stage, big explosions and things like that. You're well suited with uh, something like from Polk or Klitsch for $500 in these speakers. However, these speakers punch up way above their $550 price that I spent on them. Obviously, a lot of sweat and tears. I would have to spend at least two, three to five thousand dollars maybe uh, to get the sound out of the speakers that I'm getting right now. So you can tell that I really like my speakers. And now I want to talk about replacing this mid range driver here uh, to resurrect this design. They're discontinued because this is the Hyvee M6A, six and a half inch driver, and they don't make this one anymore. However, Hyvee makes the M6N. The only difference between the two drivers is that this is a cast aluminum and the M6N is stamped steel. So it's a little bit lower quality in terms of the frame. However, all the parameters look exactly the same. I think it's a drop-in driver for this guy. So let me know if you want to try those out and bring those over and try to get some measurements out of the M6As and the M6Ns that are currently available. And maybe you can build this exact same design. 
The BNG Radia PDR3W is still available and it's still $100. Uh, there is a generic version of it for about a third of the price. However, I'm not sure if they're exactly the same frequency response, even though they should be. And the rest of the speaker is just pretty easy to build and reconstruct as Paul made it. So this is my first build and these are the things I did on it. And hopefully you learned something. And I think I'll try to resurrect this design with the M6N. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in me trying to do that. And I really appreciate you all watching and I want to make more videos. So please subscribe, comment, like, and I uh, hope to see you next time. And lastly, I want to dedicate this to John, who got me into this hobby of being an, I guess, an audiophile. <laughs> he definitely was one. And I'll never forget the times when we sat around in his house and listened to the multiple pairs of speakers that he had and his amazing avant-garde duo speakers with huge horns paired with two Macintosh tube amps that were about 150 pounds each. I know I have to carry them. Never forget seeing the SCD1 in John's collection uh, open up and put in a seat in there like you put a record in there. So uh, John, rest in peace.